Hi there, and welcome back to Conversations with Father Greg. In this episode, we have a homily for Sunday, March 12th, 2023, which is the third Sunday in the season of Lent. We'll begin our time together today with a reading from John's Gospel. John writes, So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, should ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, Jesus' disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat, have they? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony that Jesus had told her everything that she had ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of Christ. 
May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. It was about 3.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 14th, 2003. The subway train that I was riding had just pulled out of Davisville Station and was trundling northbound. The train came to a stop and the lights went dark. We sat in the dark and in the heat for about 35 minutes. Finally, the operator released the emergency brake, and the train gradually rolled backward down a slight grade, coming to a stop at the platform we thought we had left behind. I didn't know it then, but my trip home from work had been interrupted by a blackout that would last over two days. I climbed the stairs and suddenly joined thousands of people milling about at street level. A quick look around told me that the sooner I started walking, the sooner I would get home. I stumbled through my apartment door four hours and 18 kilometers later, having walked the entire way. I was hot, tired, and thirsty. I thought of that walk this week as I read our text from John's Gospel. As our passage for today opens, Jesus is traveling from Judea in the south to Galilee, which is further north. This was a trip of about 70 miles and would have taken about two and a half days to walk. But before we jump into this morning's gospel text, I would like us to take a moment to remember the story that we had read last week. Last week's gospel reading was also from John. It was about a man named Nicodemus who was trying to get a better handle on who Jesus was and what he was up to. We heard the story of Nicodemus approaching Jesus under the cover of darkness. Nicodemus was a well-educated man who exercised leadership in his faith community. Because Jerusalem was home to the temple, it was also the epicenter of Jewish religious worship. This all helps us understand that Nicodemus was a kind of icon for the first century Jewish establishment, and which may be why he approached Jesus under the cover of night. This week, we read about another person found in John's Gospel. Prior to our reading for today, John tells us that Jesus had been traveling and teaching. John tells us that Jesus was tired and stopped at a well for some refreshment. Because it was noon, the sun would have been at its peak, at its strongest. He stopped at a well for something to drink, and the person he met there was almost the exact opposite of Nicodemus. First of all, we don't know this person's name. She's simply described as a Samaritan woman. The fact that she is described as a Samaritan tells us about more than simply her faith. You see, from a Jewish perspective, Samaritans were not considered pure, as they had a mixed heritage, part Israeli and part Babylonian. Thirdly, Jesus met this woman at a well near the town of Sychar, which is approximately 75 kilometers north of Jerusalem. In summary, let's compare these two very different individuals. We have Nicodemus, the religious leader, living and working in the center of the Jewish religious establishment, yet he brought his skepticism to Jesus under the cover of darkness. We hear about Nicodemus on two other occasions in John's Gospel. In one instance, Nicodemus defends Jesus to the religious establishment. Secondly, after Jesus' crucifixion, it was Nicodemus who would provide the embalming spices and who assisted in preparing Jesus' body for burial. Although it was customary to use spices to embalm a body, Nicodemus provided an exorbitant amount. It was quite literally an amount fit for a king. Although Nicodemus appeared skeptical at first, he would eventually become a follower of Jesus. In contrast, we have an unnamed woman whose mixed birth would have made her an outcast in Jewish circles. Unlike Nicodemus, the Samaritan woman lived in the countryside. She was far removed from the Jewish capital, both by virtue of her birth and by her geography. 
The fact that Jesus found her doing the heavy work of gathering water in the noonday heat leads the reader to believe that she was avoiding contact with those who would have used the well during the cool of the day. We soon discover that she had a rather questionable history. She had had five husbands and was now living with a man to whom she was not married. Despite these things, she was prepared to engage with Jesus openly. The woman had an epiphany and began to see Jesus as the Messiah. She went back to her Samaritan town and told everyone that she met. We are told that many Samaritans from the woman's city believed in Jesus because of her testimony. So what does this story hold for you and I today? First of all, it's worth noting that Jesus welcomed both Nicodemus and the unnamed woman. He welcomed the religious elite and the social outcast. This holds true today. All who approach Christ are welcomed. There is no minimum requirement or admissions exam. Secondly, inquiring minds and curious personalities are patiently engaged. Both Nicodemus and the woman had questions for Jesus. They didn't simply check their brain at the door and become some kind of drone disciple. As a person who always has questions, I appreciate this very much. Thirdly, once they committed, they were all in. Granted, their commitment was expressed in different ways. When we read John's Gospel, we see that Nicodemus' contribution is woven throughout Jesus' story. He used his authority and his access to defend Jesus before the religious establishment. He used his wealth to bring honor to Jesus even in his death. Nicodemus may have been slow to respond, but he did respond in faith, and there is evidence that he continued to be faithful. The woman's response was definitely more public and dramatic than Nicodemus. Through her efforts, many people began a relationship with Jesus as the Messiah. Through her words, the woman did something vital to the work of Jesus Christ. She helped make more disciples. While Nicodemus responded with his authority and wealth, the woman traded on her notoriety in town. Later on, just before his ascension, Jesus would give this disciple-making mandate to all of his disciples. In many ways, this woman Jesus met at the well was ahead of the curve. These stories combine to offer us both an example and a challenge. Both Nicodemus and the woman at the well engaged Jesus honestly with their questions and then responded in faith and brought something important to Jesus' overall work. While they both responded in different ways, the important thing is that they both responded and became followers of Christ. By extension, they also offer us a challenge. Are we prepared to authentically engage God with our questions and having our questions answered are we prepared to follow through with action? The stories of Nicodemus and the woman at the well tell us that this may mean different things for different people. Different people may express an authentic response differently. But what's important is that we meet God where we are and that we respond faithfully. Let's pray. Lord of the wellspring, source of life and truth, Give us the courage of the Samaritan woman, so that we may receive living water and worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ who quenches our thirst with eternal life. Amen.